Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about a preset in my library which is called Minimum Maximum. The name is probably not informative at the beginning, but its function is to make basic variations in animation nodes. Also starting from now on, as the preset becomes more and more complex, I won't talk about building of preset step by step, but rather a principle of how it has been built or how it, how, how it works. Since the preset library is freely provided, uh, which you can download uh, from the link in the description. By any chance, if you're interested in, you can just take a look how it has been built internally by yourself. So let's start. So here we're in Blender, and this is a very simple setup. This is probably not a very practical example, but this is the simplest example that I can come up with, uh, with this amount of nodes, like six nodes in total, including one preset. This, uh, the principle of this object transi uh, color transition node has been discussed in has been roughly discussed in my shader motion graphics tutorial, like part three probably. And uh, basically what it's doing is just uh, deciding the object the color of all these objects. And in shader, I'm linking the object the color from black to white, which means from zero to one into the factor to decide whether it actually shows uh, red or cyan. So if the, all this factor goes to one, then it shows cyan and if it goes to zero, then it shows red. And with this variation in this object, the color, then I'm creating the variation of the mixation as well. Plugging that into emission shader so that it's sometimes giving a kind of glowing light effect that uh, if you would like to working with all this light, whatever stuff. So you can increase this intensity or whatever. Something that you can potentially play with. But it, this is the uh, the shader motion graphics is not the topic today. Today's topic is about how to make the variation. So here, the whole point of variation is actually controlled by this random fourth. Uh, so if I disconnect this fourth, I'm starting to use only one value to control the entire um, col uh, the, the color of this entire setup. So if the fourth becomes one, then I have all this fully saturated cyan. And if I turn this evolve to zero, then it becomes a fully saturated red. And this is exactly what you see previously when I'm actually control this factor. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of similar. This the difference is this time you're using a fourth. And as I explained in my shader motion graphics, sometimes there are many different types of fourth. You can use the fourth depends on the location or other things. So I'm not going to discuss this further because this is not a topic today. But I will. Uh, I want to say that as soon as you plug this, uh, now we are using one value to control everything. So it's kind of very boring setup. So you don't have variation of color. But as soon as you plug this fourth into fourth, then you have a kind of a random color. And by changing the seed, it's completely procedural just to get a random distribution of color. So sometimes you are making kind of Christmas light or whatever other stuff. Then you are making a variation. The problem is that um, now there's all these kind of cubes are very desaturated. And I would like to have more kind of cyan or reddish within this setup. So let's go for reddish. I can not only change the seed because change the seed is completely random and I still have a cyan within this setup. I cannot make all this kind of fall fall within the range uh, closer to zero because the maximum is one. So there must be a probability that the default falls into 0 0.9 or something which leads to a color of a cyan. So I need a more precise control in this variation. So what I need to do is just to turn down this maximum closer to um, zero as possible, like uh, below 0 0.5 is already kind of good. So now I have a lot of reddish, okay? And the next second, I think, oh, I don't like the reddish was in my setup. I would like to have more cyan color, which is kind of, uh, whatever. So I do not only need to turn back on this maximum, but also I need to turn up this minimum. So in order to make everything to cyan, I need to not only change one value, but two values. So assume you're making kind of very procedural modeling or animation setup, you're controlling the locations, you're controlling the scale, you're controlling the rotation, you're controlling the color, you're controlling the modifier, you're controlling the speeds um, of the setup, then you always need to double the amount of parameters using this method. So in this case, you're just making uh, 12 parameters in total in order to reach what you actually want. 
This is only acceptable because it just makes things too complicated. And that's why I made a node which is called a minimum maximum. Uh, you can you there's a loop version and uh, there's a minimum maximum list version. The reason that I always have all this kind of, sometimes I have this duplicate of the preset that have the same function has been explained uh, in my preset basic tutorial and the meaning of them has been explained there as well. So if you're unsure what the why it happens, what does it mean, uh, I would suggest you to take a look with that tutorials after this tutorial has been done. Okay, but uh, there. The real difference is really just about whether you're outputting a single value or a multiple value. So since we're actually controlling the variance of multiple objects, like nine cubes within this grid, I'm going to use this list. And all this kind of list version, you always have a kind of iteration. And iteration is just to determine the amount of values or objects that you have been output. Then I just put this get less than into iteration. So I'm actually controlling, I'm actually outputting nine values for these nine objects. And I plug these values directly to fourth. It will automatically convert the values into fourth. So it kind of blue into the green output. Okay, so now everything goes to Siam. Before we actually get into color, I would like to remind you within this node that there is a uh, hidden socket of minimum, which is called a minimum and a maximum. And I want to remind you, it's basically the same as what happens this random fourth. Actually, this kind of a random series, like this random number or number wiggle, is basically the principal node which is, sits within this minimum and the maximum series. So that you always have a idea of minimum and the maximum. So this minimum and maximum, obviously just uh, controlling the range of how your random number being generated. So within this minimum to be 0 0.7, with the base number to be one and the range to be 0 0.25, then the range becomes 0 0.75 to 1.25. And up to this point, you probably already get a kind of idea about how this base and the range system works. Base is almost a average number of how the number has been generated and the range is just the range that you plus minus the base or average number. Okay. And there is also option of absolute range. So if I change this base to, so yeah, in this case, if I would like to make all these colors turn to red, I just, I don't need to control the mix, maximum and the minimum number separately. I just like control this base closer to zero. For example, make it 0 0.2 that I make everything becomes reddish. And uh, also at this point, you realize the minimum number is 0 0.15, the maximum is 0 0.25. It's because I'm using the percentage range. So it's not 0 0.25 directly adds to the base, but it's one fourth of my base to plus minus the base. And the one fourth of 0 0.2 is 0 0.05. So that's why I get this kind of range. But of course, you can also change that to absolute range so that you really end up with a negative number and max, uh, a positive maximum. Okay, so it depends on your choice. Sometimes I don't like this absolute range is because if my base is 200, then adding 0 0.25 is obviously uh, adding at 0 0.25 is obviously nothing for the variation. So I have to turn up this one, turn up this variation to be 100. Or what if I would change the base to be 1000? Then I have to again change this range to be different. So then it makes things much more chaotic. But if I choose that to percentage range, so I just need to just like 0 0.25, then I always, I can use one value to change everything everything will just be proportional because I always plus minus a one fourth of my own. Okay, uh, this is just kind of simple math. Depends on what you actually would like to do. And you can definitely turn this range to whatever number like 10%, which means 10 times of itself, or just 100% of itself. 
something like that. So in this case, I think I just uh, 0 0.25, and I get kind of kind of nice number. Depends on your base. Okay. Another thing, there's a. Uh, so let's take a look with what we can actually do with all this kind of setup. So you can definitely change the seed as previously been shown, but you can also change this evolution so that all this kind of number will smoothly just uh, change itself. Another thing is the interpolation. Sometimes it can just uh, take this interpolation so that makes. Uh, so what happens to interpolation? Uh, so let's take an interpolation input and then let's take a viewer. So if I take this exponent like this, then this is exactly the same as what has been managed here. And you just get a kind of more extreme variation. So that's why you have more reddish uh, and more cyan. So what it happens is basically increase the contrast with all this kind of interpolation. You can of course construct your own interpolation so that your exponent number can be becomes more extreme and then you have more reddish, a more extreme reddish and a more extreme sign. And if you use the mirror interpolation just it becomes a little bit different. It's just the same as you're using the mirror interpolation. So basically just to put all these kind of nodes within this preset. So you use one node to achieve all these kind of multiple function very easily. Okay. Something that you can potentially play around by yourself, but I think it's kind of very nice. Okay. And basically this is almost all about it. The scale is just uh, this for the scale. So now we are actually outputting all this kind of value. But then sometimes you would like to control scale. And you just put this vector, uh, place these values into vector form value. Then you are creating a uniform scale of XYZ. And this is exactly what happens to the scale. So you can directly use this scale instead of plug this value into vector form value. It becomes much easier. So um, this is all about it. Uh, you can play around with this node by itself. Uh, and uh, remember that there is a minimum maximum loop version if you already have a loop already. So this is about it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I, I really think this preset is very useful. I use that a lot, really a lot. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.